what is AI, why is generative AI? So this vocabulary is very important. AI is undeniably a revolution in our area in terms of technology. A revolution is not just, you know, one big step, one silver bullet. It's a journey that you're going to face all the problems. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Humans of Digital, a CIT podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Luis Greco, VP of Digital Solutions at CIT. My name is Mikhail Hanna. I work with data here in Sinchi and with AI a lot of times. And I'm Rodrigo. I've been an engineer director at CIT and I've been working with software for the past couple of years and now very interested in the AI as well. Amazing. Thank you for coming, guys. Thank you for joining me on this session. I think it's going to be an amazing topic and a very relevant right now. So I think we're going to have a very productive session. So the idea today is to talk about generative AI and hyper efficiency, right? Um, what are the opportunities that we are seeing on this topic? We know that generative AI uh, has been a bus, you know, and all, most of the companies are already prioritizing what they're going to do with generative AI. And especially in our area, we are, you know, working a lot to understand how can we improve efficiency on, you know, on the software development life cycle. And I would like to start with a couple of questions. And um, Mika, how do you see AI connected with efficiency? Well, I see that with generative AI, we are empowering people to work uh, even faster and more productive with some tools. So imagine that we have people that now can have more space to dedicate their time doing things that they have. It, they can put creativity on, they can have more, the things that are, they are free to imagine and put all the things that their skills on what they, on something that's more related to their areas. So everything that's more mechanic or something that is repeated, you can have now AI giving more power to these people. So now they can have more space to study, they can have more space to work on really matters or their areas. So I see that AI is helping a lot, the efficiency in that way. So if, if you see the, the development cycle, you're gonna see a lot of different areas, steps that guides uh, like it, the, you have the, 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 the power of discovery, you have the power of development. I see that AI can help with some tools that will help these people to focus on what matters and the other stuff that is repeated, we can have AI embracing that and letting them free to work on different stuff. So I see that this empowerment of people is very important in the age of efficiency. I know if Rodrigo has a different opinion and can complement myself. And Mika, you, you bring on an interesting point. For me, when we think about efficiency, uh, I think AI complementing the human uh, in the sense of we as humans, we normally have two big problems when we're talking about day-to-day -day tasks. The first one, we are really bad at repetitive work. Not necessarily uh, just things that are boilerplate, but just repetitive, right? You need to every time come in and check if the status of tasks are going well. You need to do a part of a, a, a spreadsheet that you have to de deal with day to day. So it's, we're particularly not good at that. We, we let a lot of the details go because it, it goes on the automatic. I think AI has an opportunity to help us there, right? Making sure that repetitive tasks keep happening as they should even if they include a little bit of creativity in there, because I think that's the further step that we gave. AI is now a little bit more creative. It has a little bit more reasoning capabilities. Uh, so that's one side of it. And the other side that I think AI can really help on productivity is the, the, the blank statement um, initial approach, right? If you have something to do and you need to start right now, it sometimes it's very hard to get out of, of the blank page and actually do something. So I like, uh, I see AI with the potential of helping me get out of ground zero. So it gives me something to react to, it gives me a couple of directions, because now it's, it's just, it's not doing the work for me, but it's, it's getting my intelligence juice flowing, my creativity juice flowing. So I see AI and efficiency connected mostly in those two things, like making sure that automated, uh, that we can automate repetitive tasks and can help us kickstart some work uh, when it's hard to get out of the, the from scratch. 
Oh, that's great, guys. And you touched on a point that I totally agree with you of the free up cognitive loading, cognitive capacity, right, from, from all the teams. And going on this direction, today we are seeing a lot of, you know, um, tools uh, trying to solve problems on the development phase, right? So GitHub, Copilot, and all the other tools. But do you have any other examples? And what are the problems that we're going to solve with the other scenarios, like ideation or operations or implementation? Do you have any other? Rodrigo, what is your thought? What are your thoughts about that and the other opportunities that we have beyond development today with generative AI? Yeah, that's a good topic because um, there's a lot of investments in general on the, on the development cycle, making sure we develop the right code, identify security bugs and all of that. And don't get me wrong, that's very important, but I think there's other opportunities. I see in interesting moves happening um, when we talk about observability. So some tools now adding AI to have not only their alerts go on, but actually, do my alerts are, are okay? Do they make sense? Can I actually interact with it on a more conversational way, having a better idea? So there's some companies going that direction, which I think it's it's great, right? But uh, when I, I think about the, the pre-work uh, that is needed for us to create digital products, that means having an idea, understanding the user, solving big problems. There are a few things here and there to help on, on smaller items, like automatic doing some design work and stuff like that. But I don't see something that is coming along to help us actually speed up that part. And when we talk about but with big organizations, that, that's normally the, the bulk of the problems that we see with them, right? It's hard to get an idea until the point of now we need to build something because it's, it, it's a tricky conversation on how to solve problems, how companies actually go with it and, and how they can actually be uh, more productive in that scenario. So I think there's a huge opportunity uh, still to use or leverage these new technologies like generative AI, which has the capability to help us create solutions, help us understand better the scenarios. I think there's a huge opportunity for us to explore and for the the human collective still to explore on that part of the work, right? The, the initial phase of the discovery elements. I believe that is part of our responsibility to understand where should we apply AI because AI itself can be added in almost any scenario that we imagine. But do we really want to add AI in that part specifically? So let's say we have the design thinking uh, step. This is something that we have a lot of designers that likes to have this immersion to understand the product themselves. So what are the pain points in that specific part that AI can help, but that will empower the human, not take from them the ability that they like to put to work. So I believe that this part is very important. And also uh, with the the, the rush of the generative AI, we also have a lot of scenarios that we should think about it. Like, do we need AI on that or generative AI or just a spreadsheet can work, right? Yeah. So I see that we have this uh, responsibility as well to understand where are we putting our efforts on and what are the main pain points that we are solving? AI can be very important in a lot of scenarios, but are we really solving a pain point that exists? So we think about this part first and then we think about the solution. For me, generative AI is more like a tool that we are going to use that can empower a lot and bring efficiency, but we have to think about the smart way to add it. Yeah, that's good. I totally agree. And because today most of the solutions are basically leveraging, um, you know, chat GPT or the API call. And we know that you don't need to solve all the problems using generative AI and especially chat GPT. And I think this is why it's important to have some AI experts, you know, contributing in the solutions that are going to, you're going to work. And, um, I think it's a very good point for us to move to the next topic. And I'm going to ask you Mika first. Why generative AI just, you know, now became a, a really hot topic? Why? It's because of chat GPT. What is the main difference that, you know, generative AI became uh, a buzz, you know, and everyone is looking for ways to solve their problems and see how they apply 
generative AI, but why now? It's a very interesting question because when you talk about the field that generated generative AI, it's something that uh, uh, was born in the 60s, so it's something that's not that new. But when you talk about generative AI, you have in a timeline, let's say that we have a field in artificial intelligence that is responsible to work with language. So we have NLP, natural language processing. So this is something that has been studied since 1960. And now we have the power of uh, hardware together with software that we created the ability that we have right now to have these models to work. These models will work with a huge computer, com, uh, computational power. So that's why we, with the born of new technologies and new stuff related to hardware, we were able to create these models that we have right now. Uh, also, when you talk about generative AI, we have uh, in near to close to uh, 2017, a lot of uh, new discoveries related to some engineers from Google that brought the paper, attention is all you need. So this paper was uh, like, can, how can you say, created a lot of uh, different studies in okay. terms of generative AI. We, we are gonna see a lot of things related to transformers, to attention. And this was something that was based on that specific scenario that we have in Native AI because now we can pay attention in the words and it, it's it basically this is the the basics of what you see from ChatGPT. When you write something there, you're gonna see that in the behind the scenes we have a model that's close uh, taking attention in each step of your phrase, and then it can generate something very close to our natural language. So we have a lot of studies. It's not something new. It's not something from 2023. Yeah. But the thing is that we have a lot of companies such as OpenAI that created this chat. And this chat that is working under the hood with these transformers, that was something that was born a lot of times from, from the past. This specific part is what is why we are talking about generative AI right now. All right, that's great. So basically, it's a combination of factors, right? So we have computational power, we have the evolutions of the models, a bunch of things, a very friendly interface, right? That people can chat and understand basically what is uh, what is artificial intelligence and what can be, you know, uh, things that they can generate. So uh, it was a, a matter of a combination of a, re a really good thing that was already happening a long time ago. And it has been democratized, right? Because yes. now we have tools like ChatGPT that's in, under people's hands. So it's not like Skynet anymore. Yeah. AI is something that I can apply in my work. So this democratization is something that helped a lot yeah. uh, to have people with this attention and this awareness on AI. Yeah. So I think this... That's amazing because usually artificial intelligence used to be something that just a small group of people work yes. with or something much more academic and now you know everyone is able to use artificial intelligence on a daily basis. That's amazing. So, and going forward on that, um, Rodrigo, I, I would like to hear from you. Uh, what are your thoughts on the challenges and the hurdles that big companies can face? Considering that, okay, we have ChatGPT, we have everything available right now. Every single day we're seeing a new tool, right? A new model, someone trying to solve a different problem. But on the enterprise scenario, the, the challenge is, you know, much more complex than just apply the tools that are already available, right? I would like to hear from you. What is your thoughts on the hurdles and the challenges that big companies are going to face in adoption of generative AI uh, strategy? Sure, and, and, and that is an interesting one because um, big organizations have a bunch of concerns. So I'll take the 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 ones that everybody's probably thinking about right out of the bat with cybersecurity and compliance, right? That that's a, that's a concern for all companies um, that they need to take care of. We need to start those conversations. AI is a reality. We need to face it on how we're going to deal with that on enterprise level, from a compliance regulations perspective, and from a cybersecurity. So that's a given, right? But there are some recent studies that show some interesting other challenges that are coming out from, from companies that are starting this. So the first one is inaccuracy, which I found it's very interesting to think about that companies are thinking about inaccuracy of the models. And 
it, to go a little deeper, it's not necessarily about inaccuracy, it's about hallucinations and how we deal with that. So how much trust can I actually put in the result that comes from AI in a sense? So I think that's an interesting conversation on, on how to deal with that, because that is an, uh, that's a very component, a very important component to the value of the technology and how it brings to the company, right? Because you think cybersecurity and compliance, those are risks that we have to manage, so we will find ways to deal with that, but inaccuracy can actually hinder uh, things for a big company. And when we think about that, I think that's one topic that we need to start discussing is, okay, how can we solve or battle that element of inaccuracy of hallucinations and accuracy of the models? Uh, and the basic element for me is how do we actually don't see AI as the standalone thing that we have in a company? It is just something that is complementary to our, our current workforce and people who are working there because those are the folks who actually know how to do the job and complementing their skills, I think it's a better path going forward. But it was fun to see inaccuracy as one of the challenges that companies see. Another one that I think it's important to touch on is uh, how the actual, the part the part that I mentioned that is solving the inaccuracy that will handle that, which is our workforce, right? So people. So when we think about people and how people see AI, right now there's like this edge on people on, okay, what, what does the future look like? Like, do, is AI gonna replace me? Is the AI gonna be on, like, it's gonna, it's something that I need to care about. So how to deal with that? And in companies, you're going to have, like in everything else, uh, people who are early adopters and people who will adopt only after a phase and people who might never adopt. So those, I think those are the main challenges for companies going forward is to think on how do we actually create a scenario where we can have people adopting the technology so they can help solve the inaccuracy, which is the another challenge that I see companies facing when they're trying to put those technologies on board. Yeah, totally agree on that. And um, the point that you touched, uh, I think it's it's really important the way that we're seeing the evolution of AI, right? So it's a combination. It's, uh, you know, the way how can we join forces between humans and, you know, AI, right? So we are not seeing the future uh, any scenario of replacement. We are seeing how can AI uh, empower and augment teams and people. So this is the way uh, that we are seeing the evolution, right? So, Mika, do you have any any comments on the challenge that the companies, especially the big companies, the enterprise, are going to face? Yeah, I see this uh, cultural resistance something very important because I don't I don't believe that we have to force people to use AI on their daily routines, but we have on the other side present the advantage that we have with AI. So. How would you not use AI thinking about the way that you can accomplish these tasks in presenting this to people? So there is a huge cultural impact on some organizations. So how we can let people be interested on this topic? And this will help us because you're going to have more people that knows AI in your organization can talk about AI. So I believe this vocabulary can, uh, can be brought. We can bring these people to talk about it if they are interested. But this is something that we can work to see how can I make these people interest like leaders, uh, how can leadership can help people for, for to give this awareness to them. So if you see a leader that is interested in AI, so I want to know why they are interested on that. So I believe that there's a, a, a huge importance in the leadership on this specific scenario. And I also have my concerns on terms of privacy, bias, etiquette. So as someone that's in the future, from 2018, I already saw a lot of different uh, concerns in terms of ethics and privacy and bias, a lot of stuff, but other models. So when you go to the United I have even other stuff, uh, even bigger stuff uh, concerns. So for example, how can I uh, deal with PII, personal identifiable information that's uh, from my clients? How can I work with the compliance about data? You have GDPR, you have LGBT in Brazil. So we have to work even closer to this regulation uh, in terms to understand what are the data that I'm working on, how my model is going to work on that. I have to have, a, I need to have a model that is 
uh, ethical. And to have this, you have to have ethical teams, you have diverse teams to see what is being in and out of this model and be able to explain that. So explainability is something that we are going to have to study even more in this area. So I see that there is a huge uh, challenge to be faced on this. But I, I also see that with accountability, like addressing the decision making, not to let just AI to decide, but also have uh, the human part being able to decide and part of the decision making is very important. Not just because the, the leaders of these models, they also say to us, okay, we have this output, but I need you to review that. So how can we use our, uh, our knowledge on this field to make these mo uh, models even more, even better? So I see we're working together. Like, oh my God. It's a balance of the non-deterministic and the deterministic. Yes. I'd like the topic that we could bring about bias and how to handle bias because this is this is intrinsic to the how the models are built, right? Because if you think about it, like large language models are nothing more than uh, they read a bunch of things that us human generated, and and now they are really good at speaking our language. That that's what they just do, right? They they know. So when they compose a sentence, it's just because they they read so much stuff that they know what's the next word in a sentence to actually make that understandable but goes to the point for mika that source is bias unbiased how humans actually do so selecting models that are uh, from sources that we trust and, and not only that knowing the sources might be important because you can have other politics in, on top of that to actually help fight bias make sure that the models are going in the direction that we want we can validate so i think that's an interesting topic around how bias will impact companies. And especially because companies in the world, they're, they're not, although they are, they don't have a heart per se, but they are composed by a bunch of folks and those folks have a belief, they have a culture. So that combination of the, the power of the AI plus what the company believes, I think that's gonna be an interesting conversation going forward and how does that match or unmatch going forward. Yeah, perfect. And going on, still in this direction and the advantages so we know that there is a bunch of challenges around ethical, security, bias, culture, but what is, what is the other advantage that companies and big companies can take from this? Okay, I want to embrace. Uh, what's going to be the advantage? So, Rodrigo, do, do we want to start on that, on the main advantage to adopt generative AI? I think there's two sides of the question of advantage that we can talk with and talk about advantage that the company will gain by actually going with AI and what big companies actually have in, in their favor, right? Because I, I think it's not all problems that big companies have. They have some things going on their way as well. So to, to start with that, I think big companies have one big important thing that they can do or they have the ability to reskill their folks much easier than smaller companies because they have more ability to invest on that. And I think that's going to be an important thing going forward. If we're saying that this is a revolution, just like mobile or internet was, that is going to change how we do things. So we need to, there's like, if you put two and two together, now you need to train people to think differently on how to do things differently. So that requires some set of reskilling of our folks. Like I mentioned, we don't believe that the AI is going to stand alone above all, and we don't want to have more people working. No, I, I think it's actually a plan. I think we both agree. So I think they have that, um, they have the power to actually do that much easier and much faster than other organizations, just because they have the capital to actually do that if required, right? So I think that's one big advantage of companies. And the other thing is in big companies, there's lots and lots of things going on at the same time. So it's actually not that hard to find opportunities for us to test things and start touching the water, right? Because although we're saying it's important to focus on what you're doing and all of that, I think it's more important at this stage of the technology is to start working on something because that way you're going to gain vocabulary, you're going to gain knowledge on how to do things. So big companies also have a plethora of problems that I can go to and say, hey, I can actually solve or test three different ideas and without really impacting their day to day job. So they have that opportunity to test those things. So I think those are two uh, really good golden elements that they have. And why it's important for them to start to go into the advantage of that they can get. I think the first one is efficiency, right? We can run from that. Again, 
humans are really bad at uh, go doing um, repetitive stuff. And on the corporate world, we do a lot of those. So I, I think there's a huge opportunity for efficiency on the short term. And going all the way, once you learn the technology and know how to use that, to reinvent business model, create new revenue streams and all of that. But that's Thanks. Thank you, Rodrigo. Mika? And I see also, let's say, let's take an example. Like, we have people that work in the, or find something, like you just got and you invite them to work thinking about uh, technology companies. So I had to create a website that's related to uh, a hospital. So when you break it down into separated items to work, you're going to have a way to do that and maybe you're going to miss something. So even knowing that AI is biased by default because of it has been trained on data that a human selected before, uh, we are biased as well. So you can have a, a different, we can say different bias, but that can also help you to have a more diverse solution because maybe you're going to, you're going to miss something during this process. So I see that AI can um, bring us a different vision created by other humans, but other uh, a bunch of people have been working on that so before. So I see that we can have a more diverse uh, way to tackle different problems with AI. So it can help a lot of organizations to make the things faster, and but not, not just faster, but with more quality and also with more efficiency, as Rodrigo was saying. Yeah, that's amazing. I love it, though, the idea to, to have a more diverse perspective on you know the challenges that we have in big companies. That's great. So guys, just doing a quick recap. So we talked about why Gen AI became a really hot topic today, right? So, okay, now based on all the evolutions around computational power, the evolution of the models and the more friendly interface, right now we, we are able to see the potential that generative AI has, right? So we talked about the opportunities that the companies has today and the challenges and the advantage that they're gonna face but everyone wants to know how can we start with generative yes. AI, right? Okay, I love it, everything that you guys saw, but how okay, you saw my company, how can I start? So okay. I'm gonna start with you, Nika. Uh, how the companies can start? What's gonna be the first you know, steps that they can do to apply you know, the next Monday or tomorrow, Friday, they can apply what they're gonna do with generative AI? Yes, I wrote a recipe here. Let's say we have four different topics okay, that that's, I was That's working. a special, right? You, yeah, have, I you was, have the guys. I was the like trying to see what we did here at Cinti that worked a lot for, for our teams as well. And bringing this with what I see from other, uh, what people are researching. So I see that's very important for the leadership to understand, to, to have vocabulary. So let's see what are the things that AI are, is helping? What is AI? Why is generative AI? So this vocabulary is very important, uh, even more for the leadership because they're gonna guide the, the company itself to to talk about it. Education, and right? To education, so yeah, this is very important. Okay. And when you have that, it's very important to define objectives. Okay, what are the business goals that I have okay. that I can use generative AI? I don't want just to to have generative AI. I have to have generative AI helping me or not in my business goals. So this value stream mapping is very important, not just for a specific team, but for the whole organization. Define the key metrics that I'm gonna have for generative AI. I think this Measure is very important. Impact, yeah, what, what is my pain point today? Yeah, right? Especially when we're talking about efficiency, right? How yes. are you gonna measure efficiency? So if right. I have an issue with infrastructure, for example, how can I use generative AI to help me to solve this problem in a more efficient way? So this is something that I think it's important. Uh, if you want to have your own uh, structure, you have to have data. So if you don't have data, you're gonna not have to start with your brand new model. But I don't need. I don't think this is gonna be the starting point. And what worked a lot for us, like pilot projects, like. If you have uh, 
a small scale uh, experiment like a hackathon to put people to work in practice uh, in a practical way like let people use these models in a daily routines and say to them uh, experiment talk to me say uh, say what you like it or not from this too do you really think that this can speed up your process in some way uh, I think we're, we're gonna have to back, get this too and put in the hands of people that works and develop software in our companies not just software but the people that are involved in the whole process in the end I believe that um, it's very important for us to talk with our clients understand their pain points as well not just in the, all our company but if you have a client to understand what are the pain points that they have, if we can speed up this with generative AI or not. I believe that this with this point is something that we can start and make this yeah. process easier. Amazing, amazing. Thanks a lot, Mika. Rodrigo, what are your thoughts? AI is undeniably a revolution in our area in terms of technology. And being that it, it's always a challenge to say, like, how do you start, right? Because it's revolutionizing everything. But I like uh, what Mika said, and, and there's a good quote from Buckminster Fuller that I like to use, which is, you never fight the existing reality, right? To change something, just build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So I believe that is a good, good way for us to think on how we're going to revolutionize things. You don't have to go in guns blazing and try to reinvent the company or reinvent everything. You can find a good use case, create a new way of working and help solving that problem. And that will automatically, if it's more efficient, it's better for the company, that will automatically be the new reality, right? Then it's about scaling that. So that gives us, a, a, I don't know, a, a safer way, but, but more than that, a practical way to approach things. So I, I, I like to, that approach in general for us when we're talking about revolutionary stuff and changing a lot, because it's hard to fight the existing system. So let's find something that we can do end-to-end -end very different. And then when that is actually more, revolutionary is faster, it's more efficient, it costs less to do, then automatically everybody now is going to be in that scenario, right? Because that's the cooler side, that's the better side. So that then you play with the human element as well to, hey, that seems better, right? I need to go in that direction as well. So I think that's a good way for us to start. But I would like to add a note in here, and big companies have big problems, and that tends to generate analysis paralysis. I think this is the moment uh, in time where companies have to start something, right? They, they need to dare to learn. This is the moment that they can actually ignite things. So I would say, like, I, the way I agree, it's very important for us to try to map things that are, will generate value. It's almost more important to start because it will give us the vocabulary that Mika just mentioned. It will give leadership some tone on what the technology can and can do in real terms. What can I expect from it? So I think that's the most valuable thing on the ignition phase or where can you start less than finding the exact thing that will solve our problems because that's going to lead can lead to analysis paralysis but if you take that aside you find a good enough place for you to do something that will generate value so it's not just wasteful uh, optimization but it will generate value so start with that so, because beginning it's very important there's a very different vocabulary there's a very different way that we need to approach problems there's a very different way that we approach how to solve things and how do we see the quality of the output. So starting for me, it's the bigger note. And if I can say on how to start, I would say it's, it's start by not fighting the status quo. You're not going to win, just create something new. Awesome. Companies have a choice, right? Or they're going to embrace in a way, or they're going to you know, avoid this and see what's going to happen in the future. The way that we see this, Embrace, start with small experiments, learn, because it's a journey, right? It's not a big bang transformation. So you need to learn from that. You need to support people in this transformation. And in the end, you're gonna get most of the results of this revolution. A revolution is not just, you know, one big step, one silver bullet. It's a journey that you're gonna face all the problems and all, all the challenges, but you're gonna get all the advantage on that, right? So, wow, that's amazing. When With that, I would like to Thank you for the opportunity to be here. It was an amazing session. I think we, we discussed very relevant topics for the companies and the challenges that they're facing today, uh, especially um, how can Gen AI be applied for hyper efficiency. We believe that the, the number is going to be, you know, we're going to face radical levels of efficiency in the next couple of years or maybe the co next couple of months, considering the, you know, 
the velocity and the, uh, how things are moving fast on this scenario. So um, I would like to thank you, Mika, and thank you, Rodrigão, for that. And thank you, all the listeners. Uh, it was our first uh, podcast on generative AI. I think it's going to be one of the, the first one for the many that we're going to do. And thank you very much.